Well, here we are in the desert in Joshua Tree. This is Manny's mic locker. I'm with my good friend Dave, who is sexier than you can imagine in person. Please tell us where we are and what's going on here. We're at Rancho de la Luna Recording Studio in Joshua Tree, California. This is our 30th anniversary, and Manny was cool enough to come out here and Hell check yeah. out some of the mics in the locker. Happy 30th. Happy That's what I'm talking 30th. About. someone that's I know he's here but he's definitely legendary in the world of if you've lived in LA and you're a musician the first thing I heard about him was his guitar playing then uh, maybe well over 20 years ago I'd have friends that would tell me about this place in the desert that they would record at that had like gear that was just to die for if you've never been to a desert oasis like this uh, make a trek out here. And also, this studio is available for if you wanted to ever book it. It's not, even though Queens of the Stone Age, um, Caius, name me some of the bands that, that the Desert Sessions were done here. And yeah. What other bands have come in here recently or in the last few years? Iggy Pop, Afghan Wigs have recorded here, Mark Lanigan. Yeah, God rest his soul, man. Yeah. What a uh, guy. You know, these people that have come here and they come here for a reason and they come back for a reason. I think Arctic Monkeys have been here. Oh, yeah. Some of my favorite musicians in L.A., I'll, I'll see them on, you know, some kind of Instagram or a photo of them tracking here. So it's a studio that's used every day and they're not precious. I mean, everything is here to play and use. And so we're going to go over his microphones that he really loves. I'm excited to hear how Dave uses the, the microphones out here and actually what kind of mics we have. All right. Here is his mic locker. And I will say that is a very, very beautiful mic locker. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I don't have anything like super rare or uh -huh. ex totally expensive, but I have stuff like the, uh, the Velveeta mic, which is... Uh, what the heck is that? It's more of a... Uh, sound toy thing you know mm -hmm. chuck, 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 chuck. so you can put that in go ahead and talk into that chuck one, two. everybody needs this the beta but we got the uh this is a real gem that's the akg fender mic that they made what in the 70s yeah the, these are actually branded under grundig as well so they have oh. a grundig and they have a fender and I want to say they have an AKG. It's the same exact mic. And tell me what makes this mic special. Well, it's got a built-in spring reverb. And my friend Alan Johannes uh, turned me on to these. He had a few of these. And they used to be really cheap. And they're getting a little more expensive. They're, they're temperamental at best. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to kind of move the batteries around to make, make sure work. they're working. But if you can find one of these cheap, they're, they, they have a really interesting sound. He's actually got one. You can't see it, but it's on, it's permanently in the middle of the drum room right here. Yeah, so. it, move, it floats around yeah. depending on where. And PJ Harvey used it for vocals, and she kind of rode mm. the reverb on the because cool. you ride the reverb yeah, yeah. on there, and that turned out great. It was a one take pass. Ma a magic moment. This is the magic Manny mic. <laughs> I, I watched his uh, show us your junk, and he was talking about these, so I immediately went out and bought a couple of those. Those are realistic, called 1070s. They're like Radio Shack mics, like $29 on eBay. And, funny enough, they were $39.95, oh. brand new. So a little bit of a discount. So yeah, you got a little discount on them. How much did you get yours for? Uh, that one, I think, was 70 So, so it's gone up a little bit, because I think you said 29 yeah, yeah. Uh, but when i saw him for 70 i think i got the the dented one for 60 and that one for 70. well it was funny because when i first contacted dave even though i've known him for years uh i was lucky enough to him to have watched the episode a few weeks before we chatted so when i'm talking to him he's like i just literally got that mic that i mentioned so it was flattering but also it's a camaraderie of being studios you get cool weird mics this guy we're just getting started, right? Yeah. So what else we got, man? Well, you know, I, I take what you say, you know, I, I, I love what you do. So this was a, this is a Sennheiser. Hmm. For years, we thought it, we used it for a talkback mic because it's uh -huh. got a switch on it. We didn't realize how amazing it was. It turns out this was uh, Dave Grohl's Them Crooked Vultures vocal mic. What is the model of that? Does it say? You know, it doesn't say on here. Um, and I think it was 
usually his are black, but this one was tinted mm -hmm. silver. Mm -hmm. That's one. We got the uh, the six six six, which yeah. comes in handy. Uh, Josh Homme loved these for a while. These were on a lot of Queens of the Stone Age things. And uh, now, what would he use those for? Vocals or instruments? Uh, there's photos of Elvis singing through these, yeah. and then Josh liked them for guitars for a while. Sometimes on bass, mm -hmm. they're pretty cool. That one gets used a little bit here and there. This is a, a Electra voice 635A. I've seen uh, Robin Zander singing through these on. Wow. Cheap trick, so uh, I, I bought that. But I what is the model again on that? Six thirty-five A. All right, I on, think the on the list. On the list to do. Yeah, that's what I saw. But now I've seen them on overheads. But I saw Robin Zander using one, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm. Oh, and, and and I saw another picture of Robin Zander using the PL ninety-five Electro oh. Voice. This is like uh, live at Cheap Trick stuff. Yeah, so I picked up that. You know. Beautiful. I mean, look at it. It's just like, looks like it's been through a war. I know. It probably has. Mm -hmm. It might have even been used by Robin Zander. I love that. Um, this was one of our first decent mics. When we recorded Caius, they wanted a 414, so they bought us one for the for the studio. Look at that. And we traded that for studio time. So that's been here this for... This is the Caius mic, pick, basically. 95, mm -hmm. I think. Is now, what did you use that for Caius? Is that just everything you They were using it for vocals mm -hmm. for John. Okay. Which is always great. I saw you have the, the Rupert Neve Neve up there. Uh, yeah. The, Neve the, ribbon. Yeah, that's a great one. It's kind of fell one day and got dented, oh, unfortunately. No. Does it work? Which, oh, it works great. I mean, it didn't didn't hurt the microphone. Yeah. It just kind of dented it. So that was kind of a bummer. I really love the SE Voodoo's uh, little ribbon guys are cool. Really nice. The new uh, MAD Mojave is yeah. a really great live and... Um, Vocal mic up for a handheld. Mm -hmm. I really love that. Now you mentioned you had some uh, prototypes from Mojave or Arroyo. Are yeah. they? Are any of those in here? Or are they yeah. outside? This is the uh, Dave Royer's first attempt right. at a tube microphone. Mm -hmm. It's real. It's my favorite mic that I own. Actually, it sounds amazing. That's the power supply. It's in a little. Uh, oh, it's a gun box. Uh, yeah, a little ammo box there. Mm -hmm. I had the original ribbon, the one yeah. 121, yeah. and it was dented because he would he was trying to see the toughness of it, and he would use it yeah, as yeah, a yeah. hammer and throw it across the room just to make sure that it would take yeah, a yeah, lick yeah. and keep on ticking. But he was visiting a couple of years ago and uh, spotted that it was the prototype. So he took it, right? He took it back. But this one, I'm sorry, Dave, you can never have this one. No, this, no. one this, this is the sound of the studio. That right one now. is is. Speaking about prototypes, it looks like it was just cut out of steel and he put a grill on it and like, there it is, you know? Man, it sounds, it, I've put it up against every mic when people have rented mics or brought mics for sessions and it, it holds its own and incredible. Speaking of that, this is a, another tube mic by the same company. Oh, um, yes. This is their new. Royer uh, designed it, but it's from Mojave. Yeah, it's the MA37, uh, which is their take on the Sony mic and it's. One of the greatest mics there is to to get nowadays. Now I've used one of these for about a year and a half, and it's really cool because in the back of it you can adjust the cardioid to omni, but it's mechanical. You put a screwdriver in the back of that, and I mean this. I know it's going to sound amazing. You know, I can't wait to hear it on everything. You know. Yeah, I. You know, we uh, Dusty brought one out, and we used it on acoustic and vocals both, and they sounded so great. And now I'm I'm really want to hear what it sounds like as a drum room mic and try it on a few other instruments just to see what's going on with it. Cool. And then, you know, this mic is a copy, not a copy, but is made in the spirit of a Sony C37. So its shape, its look, looks like a Sony. But one thing that's different, there's all these little holes around here with a tube inside. And once again, I think it's just super smart. Oh, like, yeah keeps you from your mic it makes your mic gonna last a long time basically and those you know? guys are genius you know they really are dave royer and dusty wakeman yeah they're the nice you jam with dusty and oh yeah yeah we've recorded a lot together he plus he was always one of my favorite bass players in la when i lived there oh wow, nice oh, nice one of the best i've really been liking i uh i was the guys at ua were kind enough to send me the sphere uh -huh. which Whoa. is a modeling microphone and it uh -huh. does it does all the ones i can't afford these days okay. so it does all the old neumanns uh, it actually does the sony uh, some telefunkens and and it does 
sure 57s and 58s does the Royer 121 it's you know it's I don't have those here to put them side by side so I haven't done the side by side but it's creative you can use it musically yeah and especially for people like me or like kids that only have enough money to buy one or two they're they're really affordable and you know once you have the mic they also come with the the outboard gear and compressors that you would really want you know they're they're modeling uh stuff like a neve console or an api and you can pair it and the other cool thing about these is uh you can change it after the fact so say you were you're not, you're you not were, committed to you can go you, oh i want to use a yeah, 67 yeah, instead of a 47 yeah if you're using a 40 and it also does proximity changes so oh. maybe if someone was way on it and you're like ah oh, you, you can change it so for the price and the sound incredible we oh, that is really been loving that yeah it's been really cool it's it's great to see the future of of things too, you know, like to see from th this is the future of the past. Yeah, this is the future of the future. Yeah. I mean, for most people that now record on computer systems in their house, you know, you've acquired something like even all these mics. This is years and years of oh yeah accumulation. So now you can go to Guitar Center and or go on to Sweetwater and buy that microphone, and it kind of fulfills a locker of mics. But I will say. I do believe that if you do go this route and you get these individually interesting microphones, they're oh. kind of like fingerprints and personalities that you can change. Like you would be yeah. the king of guitar amps of just changing the mic. Absolutely. Adds, adds so much depth to it. You and know, you know it, it, it was a lot more fun for me because I'm older. So things weren't quite as expensive as they were before. Yep. The Another one of my favorite overheads or the Mojave Audio, uh, these are the M100s. MA 100s. Yep, I had the, a 100. I love what these do for cymbals. If you have someone that's really cymbal heavy, I love the, the way that it reins them in and gives yeah. you the act. It's a tube mic with a yeah. power supply. Yeah, the power supply is over there and it sounds great. So that's, these are another, if you're looking for great overheads. Well, you know what, they discontinued them a few years ago because I bought the last batch from Dusty before oh, they really? stopped them. Oh, really? But they said they're, they're, he's going to maybe make a few more. So stay tuned. They're, oh, the okay. MA100s were the greatest mics, but what happened was I just don't think people had yet figured out that small pencil condensers that are tube are just so useful. I believe one of the greatest mics that Sony made that's not a tube mic, Yeah, and it's uh, one of the most... It's the wonderful utility for anything uh, just crazy cool. And tell us a story about this one. How did this come into your world? Well, for a while, we rented a 24-track, um, two-inch tape machine until we mm -hmm. figured out it's way too dusty and there's no one that replaces or Parts, works yeah. on them. So it became, it was just, this was probably in 1997 or mm -hmm. eight. And it was just really hard to have, you know, we had a, a smaller tape machine that we yeah. were working with and uh, the two inch was just a lot. So the guy that was renting it to us sold us a bunch of gear. And this is one of the things we got from him, the Sony mic. So that one's one of my favorites, especially for a vocal mic. What is this guy going to? This one is just, uh, that was just a, a box that I got. Because I like the, you, used to, you know, we're near a military base, but uh -huh. this is a, this is another amazing mic that we use, and it's a, a Sankin microphone oh, yeah, bought the, from the, the same room. guy. Oh, yeah. That's the front. He painted it pink. Right. Uh, I forgot the model on that, but oh, that yeah. thing on uh, acoustic instruments, especially like uh, an upright bass, mm -hmm. in incredible. Dude, there's two capsules in there. It's, it's, an, it's, 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 it's an amazing. Another friend sold me this. Is the buyer... MC-83-4N. Never heard of it, but I'm excited to see this. Oh, yeah, that's their, that's a miniature version of their large, I think it's a 740. This, Beautiful, uh, Mike. Yeah, this thing is great. A friend of mine gave, he he, he used to work at um, in L.A. at one of the coolest studios that I always forget the name of, but... Uh, he highly recommended this, and this thing is so beautiful, and it sounds so good. Another great vocal or acoustic instrument microphone. I mean, Bayer Dynamics, I, I will say there's probably not a, a, from the ribbons to their 380s to their 201s, they're all just high-quality German Amazing. mics. Amazing. And affordable. They're all affordable. I got this for 50 cents at the swap Dude. meet. It's a tiny PZM. It's plastic. Uh-huh. 
Oh my god, that thing is so cool. And it weighs, it weighs, you got a little, you know, put a little weighs battery nothing, in it. right? So, that, yeah, this one's got the this one I, de I definitely have not used a lot. Mm -hmm. Still, to, I, still yeah. to die for. This is like back when the swap yeah. meet was amazing here you know locally um rob schnapp the local producer he i love I rob. think beck sang into a pzm for loser oh yeah he did yeah it was a radio shack pzm but some the same technology uh, uh a guy rick wilkinson he's he's really good friends with dave royer mm -hmm. he he does classes with autistic kids where he teaches them how to make ribbon mics oh, so he gave me this it's shut up and give me the mic by d <laughs> snyder uh-huh and uh it opens up that this, is this, so this is what a kid would make if they took the class. This is uh -huh. the, the the microphone. Look at that. So you would, you would go to the class and then you would make this and you would take it with you. But he also designed this hot holder, which is really cool for soldering. Oh, beautiful! It does, doesn't move. You see this? This is a little card in there. Yeah, this is. He's a really cool guy, Rick Wilkinson. I love this. Let me. Uh, we're we're going to try to do a class. We we had. We were trying to do a class for kids up here, but this is right at the beginning of COVID, so we never had a chance to do it. But we are, he and I and Dave are going to do a, a class up here for kids. Mm -hmm. That's why we're doing this technically is yeah. just to share things that you may pass up in a store because it's not a major brand name, but like you can still make amazing records with this. I mean, this is all color. Yeah. You know? You know these these were pretty cool for a while. These the, oh, yeah. the, the blue yeah. eight balls. And, yep. Um, Hutch used these a lot live with Queens of the Stone Age for a while. What do you use them on? He would put. I think this was like a bass one. I think at one point he was using the blue ones for snares. Really? Occasionally, you know, mm -hmm. not uh, the red ones. I think were the bass. Actually. Hutch is one of the n uh, best sound persons you can say. Sound yeah, absolutely. In LA. I mean, you can't get any better than that cat. I might have to get you to repair yeah. it, but my uh, yeah, my good friend say, Bingo oh, you know, gave me that. The ribbon is completely flat. It's supposed to have a little bit more of a wave in it. Oh, it is. Yeah, but oh, it's but these are still beautiful mics. Things I've got I've got a couple more um, great prototype mm -hmm. mics. Uh, my friend Dave Raphael, who makes incredible gear under the name Autac. This is his prototype that he's mm -hmm. letting me use for his. Let's see. And once again, on the company name, Autac A W T A C, stands right. for Awesome uh, Transistor Company. But this is—I just got this the other day, and it's blowing me away on bass and vocals. Incredible! Wow, the, the clarity. He he. Anything he makes, he uses the best uh, components that you can you can have. Now, here's a cool thing on that bass cab. There is a small—that's a ribbon mic by Shure. And I love that you're doing that. That looks so cool how you're using that. Oh, it sounds so good, too. Th those mics are incredible as well. They they really sound amazing on guitar. I mean, especially on guitars as well. But we found that, uh, especially with this orange rig, mm -hmm. it it enhances the sound. And I want to give a shout out to Jamie at Earthquaker. This yeah, is Jamie Stillman. This is yeah. this is the pedal board that he put together when he was here and I haven't taken it apart because it sounds so, sounds so good. Why yeah, mess with yeah, it? He's exactly. the godfather of that. He's the best. He's the best. Those guys are great there. I have a prototype of this was I think it's the original MA2 says so he did this in 2001. Mm -hmm. Dave and and uh Dusty, but I think it might. That's a Mojave. Yeah, it's, it was called the MA2. I don't know if it made it to something else, but that's. I've had that one. It says 2001, so maybe that's when I got it. Wow! And okay, you know, we got a 57 back here. Always a 57. There's a another, and now uh, Royer's making these. I don't know if it's Royer or Mojave. I think it's Mojave that's making the. The double clip for oh, their yeah, the for the one twenty one and the fifty seven. Yeah. So that's what I have on the Supra right now. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Now, and also, I will have to say, like, I know this is a bedroom, but technically, if you had a room and you had amps in, <laughs> this bed in here is the greatest thing to absorb it the really sonic is. mayhem. So I know you can't see it, but I've got amps all below me. There's amps here. Here's a twin twelve, which is one of my favorites. 
Let's go check out the mics that yeah. you have on the, the drum room. There's some really interesting ones in there as well. Well, here we are. I'm looking at the kick drum. Now, I'm very familiar because I do have NS10. So this is an NS10 speaker. And please explain to people if they don't know why you have a speaker on the front of your drums. Brings out all the subs. And actually, Hutch built that for us here with an NS10 that we had as a monitor. But we don't use mm -hmm. NS10s a whole lot anymore. Okay. They tend to blow, and you're they just do. always replacing them. Yeah. But he built that for us with the the the, the whole stand. Yeah. And then cool. in here is an inside is a D12, which Hutch traded oh, for the old ones, right? Yeah, one, okay. one of the old Ringo ones. Star one. Yeah. We we could bring it out if you want, or it, it's it, trust me, it's old <laughs> and it's in there. But Hutch makes uh, jewelry, and he was in Germany. And a kid came up and said, I really want one of your rings, but I don't have money. Could you, would you trade it for a D12? Oh my God. So, that's, and that still costs a lot of money. Those are oh, yeah. up to a thousand dollars sometimes. Maybe so. Know? Yeah. And um, if you ever wanted, you don't, even though you see a speaker here, I had a buddy of mine that went to like a thrift store and he bought like five or six speakers. He just took them all out until he had one of these and he was able to compare yeah. them. So you can definitely go out and buy a $5 Anything. speaker Put in, and all it is is you hook up a guitar cable and it runs to a DI. Yeah. And then that is basically, uh, and if people don't know, most um, headphones are microphones. Like the Beatles would have their headphones and they put them on Paul McCartney's bass rig. You run that to a mic pre and it's basically a sub woofer yeah. bass amp. So being creative, I love this. I don't have one. I used to have one for years, but this is uh, something I used to use for bass guitar as well. Yeah. I love it. That's I just love the NS10. And I think you can use any speaker, but NS10 much, seems to be the one that everybody wants to use. It's the fancy version, but don't be uh, don't be uh, too hard set on that. I think if you go get any kind of old speaker, take it out, have fun with it. It's yeah. probably going to sound cool. I have another Royer prototype, which was for Mojave Audio. It's the 603, uh -huh. and I don't think they make a 603, but this was... I got this at the same time as the one that's on the amplifier as yeah. well. And this is this one sounds great on guitars, like acoustic guitars, or you know, it's got its own power supply and sounds great. I right now it's on a, a hi hat because they wanted a real crispy hi hat mm -hmm. on the last session. Another mic that we got from the guy that rented us the the two inch was this PZM. It's a it's a uh, stereo PZM mic. That whole thing is the PZM. This yeah, it had it had really cool uh, foam that just right there, but it over that's, the years that's, it disintegrated. And that's hiding the the elements, whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. Or I guess I mean it had foam in there, and it just kind of over the years just kept falling out. So finally, we just shoved some new foam in. And for overheads, right now we're using Mojave Audio. Uh, MA300. They're amazing. Uh, they, they go for more of a good tom sound for overheads, whereas the, the others are more cymbal, like, yeah. you know, these, uh, we were going, they were doing a lot of tribal stuff on the last. So you can almost see this is kind of not over the cymbal, but it's yeah. over like the, the tom. Yeah, they're definitely yeah. more, I mean, you get plenty of, and, and we honestly, we had, uh, this mic with something else. Okay. In the center, we have the Rupert Neve designed SE, uh, tube mic. Which we obviously we we're well over mic'd on everything, but I I was telling you I get a lot of people that are only here for a few days, so we just give you them cover them. You just roll, you know, it's it's Pro Tools. <laughs> you just you just let them decide. On the toms, I have Audix D4s, and I started using those a few years ago. I had Bill Sismic here recording Joe Walsh. He wanted to bring some of his favorite mics in, and he brought these. Mm -hmm. And he brought uh, SE overheads, yeah. which I have. Yeah. And I was blown away by how great they sounded because usually we have 421s or, you yeah, know, condensers. It's, uh, yes, uh, yeah. you know, and, and they, which sound amazing, but there's something about these. They're so affordable and they really. They're rugged. You can smack them oh and they're going to be fine. And they sound incredible. I mean, they, they're up on my, my, <laughs> my ear now. But you know, anyone could afford these. They're and like you said, they'll they're durable and Yep. I mean one thing that's really cool, like if you if you've tuned in and you see this, this isn't this whole drum setup with all the mics wasn't like we didn't say we're coming in and then he set them up. This is like working class studio all the time. You know, you you come in, hit, turn on the computer, 
he set up. So all these mics that, that Dave has mentioned, they're, they're really tried and true. And I think that was one of the coolest things about the mic locker, because I wanted to see, even though I've never been out here, I wanted to see what are the things that you guys do. And even the SC2 mic, uh, yeah. tell us a little about, you were mentioning there's a story about that of that, that particular mic. It can't move it, or what is this? <laughs> well, like? you, can, you can move it, but it's the only uh, placement that we have marked. Check it out, Eric, it's right there, that big it, one on the floor. It's SE Gemini mu- tube mic that I've had forever. And it's, I did have to replace the tube. And my friend gave me a very cool 1950s Philips tube replacement. Yeah. So that thing sounds incredible. Even right better. Now. But for some reason, right there, if you just need one or two mics, that thing has all the punch that you're looking for. Mm-hmm. But, but my neighbors and you know myself, we're all musicians and we love to record. And so this is our setup for I love it. for us. And then when when like I said, when people come in that have only a couple of days, you just let it roll and they can take it home and and mix, or we can do it and they can tell us what they really want to hear if they want everything if they want just a couple of overheads and a you know if you know if you want to search uh some records that are really kind of i think would speak for this today you can look at the desert sessions which have a lot of stuff which records of caius were done here what's that in that world of caius and queens of the stone age what stuff was was recorded here so maybe people can hear what this place sounds like uh caius we did some stuff for man's ruin so they did a cover a black sabbath cover and a few songs and then they did their last recordings here which would have would be fat so forgot so and a couple other songs from that era and the drum sound incredible and we really didn't have many mics at that point the 414 yeah, yeah. and couple of shores and uh, I think we used a D112. You also have an Arctic Monkey's hair. They did a recording here? They did a lot of recording here. They they uh, wrote a lot of uh, the AM album. Yeah. They recorded a lot of Humbug here. Okay. And they did some incredible trippy stuff when, when they recorded here. They used Al, Alan Johannes was one of the um, mm-hmm. was engineers, one of the engineers yeah. and he brought in his Vista light Ludwig yeah. kit, like yeah. a big kit. And they did weird things where they would put like wood over the toms with the mic on the flip side. I, I don't know. They were doing yeah. some really interesting stuff to just Break trip it out. out. And we, I remember we opened the window behind us. Mm-hmm. It's a little too hot right now. Yeah. But, uh, they put this mic about six feet outside the window. That was part it's like of the, a gunshot yeah. coming right out yeah. the window. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how much of that's in the mix, but yeah, that they, they had a whole, I love that, a whole different vibe on, on what they were doing. I mean, I why had not? War Paint in and, yeah. uh, they, they used a different, they used Stella's kit and they mm-hmm. also, uh, brought in lots of things to dead, like to really deaden the sound. And, mm-hmm. you know, most of the people that come here really want the rock. Yeah. You know, because they they like whatever rock yeah. has been recorded here. And it's a Gretsch. Yeah. Uh, and the snare looks like a Ludwig. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, I forgot what that is. This is Superphonic. Superphonic, yeah. I have a I have a 67 Superphonic. Yeah, I think this is 64. Uh-huh. The kit's mid-70s. We got that from a friend of ours who used to be a um, a park ranger for the Joshua Tree National Park. Mm-hmm. He, he Unfortunately, he passed away, uh. but we have been using his drums forever well his and, drums lived on you know and the guys from roots eq they, uh, they they make these um which you know when you want to just deaden it a little bit instead of putting tons of yeah. tape or whatever on it you know like we kind of like i said they were going for tribal so they they did want it a little boomy but mm-hmm. not you know too ringy well anyways that wraps up manny's mic locker out here with dave dave was kind enough to not only show us the mics he used how he used some of them really cool mics that you can go out and find and and most of these are still available in the world they're not they're vintage but maybe in the sense of being older so you can find them but dave thank you for the tour thank you, you manny. Are a true badass thank you, you are thank you. all right guys there it is